Today is February 27th. It's the 58th day of the year, and this is the On This Day podcast. If you've been listening since the very first day, some of this may sound a little familiar to you. If you joined after that, it'll all be new. Either way, I hope you enjoy today's show. Brand spanking new episodes coming very soon. Today is Polite People Day in Russia, but it's not quite what you think. It's also known as Special Forces Day, apparently declared by Vladimir Putin for no official reason but seemingly to mark the day Russian troops seized control of Crimea in 2014. The troops are wearing no insignia when they invade Crimea and their faces are covered in masks. Russia denies that they're Russian troops, yet three weeks after these faceless, nameless, nationless troops carrying Russian weapons take control of the area, Russia annexes Crimea. These masked soldiers are referred to as little green men for their unmarked uniforms, also as unknown armed men, and even polite armed men referred to as such by the press, who are at a loss for how to describe these soldiers of unknown origin. And the troops become known as polite people, which, as far as I can tell, starts as an internet meme that then evolves into a commonly used description for Russian special forces. And the people of Crimea take selfies with the polite people, snapping pics of themselves next to masked gunmen, the same as tourists do with the Queen's Guard outside Buckingham Palace. So while I'm still not sure that this isn't some kind of joke, happy Polite People Day. On this day in 1933, Germany's Reichstag building is set on fire. The Reichstag is the legislative body for the Weimar Republic led by President von Hindenburg. And the building in which the Reichstag assembles in Berlin is set ablaze in the evening of this day in 1933 by an arsonist's torch. A young communist named Marinus van der Lubbe is arrested, convicted, and sentenced to death for the crime. Earlier in the month, the newly sworn-in Chancellor Adolf Hitler has had his cabinet issue a decree for the protection of the German people, a temporary measure banning political meetings and restricting the press. After the fire in the Reichstag building on this day in 1933, Hitler and the Nazi party declare that communists are trying to overthrow the government and use the act of sabotage as cause to increase party control, convincing President von Hindenburg to sign an emergency decree suspending civil rights. Hitler has been chancellor for less than a month. In the following weeks, Hitler and the Nazis will strengthen their grip on the government with the Enabling Act which gives the Chancellor the authorization to pass laws by decree. Von Hindenburg signs the Enabling Act one month after the Reichstag fire on this day in 1933, ending the Weimar Republic and giving Hitler full control over Germany. Marinus van der Lubbe and a handful of alleged co-conspirators are put on trial for the fire, but in the end, only van der Lubbe is convicted of climbing in a second-story window and setting the Reichstag Assembly Hall on fire, all by himself. The 23-year-old van der Lubbe, who is partially blind from a Lyme accident at work, is sent to the guillotine. Since 1933, there's been a lot of speculation about whether van der Lubbe actually set the fire or not. He claims responsibility for the fire, saying he set the fire to awaken German workers to the threat of fascist rule. But many believe if he really was involved, he did not act alone. His conviction is overturned in 1998, but that's 75 years too late for him. Many people, though, believe that the Nazis set the fire themselves to accelerate their consolidation of power and to have reason to eliminate thousands of their opponents, communists and others. Whether they did or not, That is exactly what happens after the fire in the Reichstag, set on this day in 1933. On this day in 1973, the town of Wounded Knee, South Dakota, is seized by members of the American Indian Movement, known as AIM. Formed in 1968 in Minneapolis, 
AIM is an American Indian civil rights group organized to help Native Americans who've been displaced from reservations to urban ghettos by federal government programs. Over the next few years, the group expands its mission to include most all Indian issues, particularly the revitalization of traditional culture and the restoration of tribal lands. They participate in the occupation of Alcatraz from 1969 to 1971, the Trail of Broken Treaties March on Washington, D.C. in 1972, and on this day in 1973, AIM seizes the town of Wounded Knee. Wounded Knee is located on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation and is the site of the Wounded Knee Massacre in 1890, when the U.S. 7th Cavalry murders more than 200 Lakota men, women, and children. AIM leaders oppose the administration of tribal leader Richard Wilson, accused by AIM of corruption and abuse of power by his private militia, the Guardians of the Oglala Nation, affectionately called Goons. AIM takes control of Wounded Knee on this day in 1973, demanding the removal of Wilson and the restoration of treaty negotiations with the U.S. government. For 71 days, AIM is in an armed standoff with Wilson's goons and the FBI and U.S. Marshals who have surrounded the town. Small arms fire is traded, a U.S. Marshal is shot and paralyzed, an FBI agent wounded, and two tribal members are killed. Also, civil rights activist Ray Robinson, who participates in the AIM resistance, disappears during the siege, most likely killed as well. In early May, after ten weeks of negotiations, the American Indian Movement members surrender, and U.S. Marshals take control of Wounded Knee. Following the siege, Wilson and his goons step up their intimidation efforts, and the murder rate on the reservation skyrockets. And after a lengthy trial, charges against AIM leaders for the siege of Wounded Knee that begins on this day in 1973 are dismissed. There are 308 days left in the year.